Hi everyone, Fritz here, and in this video we're going to go over how it's going to be more cost effective to upgrade the head unit in your car to an aftermarket piece versus getting it straight from the factory. Now as you can see here on my car, we have the factory head unit here. And this is just the base model head unit. There's no GPS, there's no satellite radio, nothing like that. And the reason why is because I wanted to upgrade it to an aftermarket piece on my own, save a little bit of money, because typically when you're getting it straight from the factory, you can't upgrade just one component. It comes in a package that includes a bunch of other things. Some things that you might not even use. So here, I just have an Android head unit that I'm gonna install myself. This roughly cost me under $600. Versus getting it from the factory could have spent over $2,000. Now, if you still don't feel comfortable doing this install, let us know where you're from in the comment section and let's build this community. Let's help each other do this install. If you feel uncomfortable doing it, we're gonna find someone in your area that can help you do it. So what do we need for this install? We just need a few basic tools. I'm gonna use a drill to speed things up, some trim tool pieces. Having a microfiber cloth when we lay down the head unit will be very helpful. A tray so that we can keep all the screws in there. A magnetic one is even gonna be better. And I just love to have some double-sided tape as well as Velcro strips in order to help us with the cable management. So let's go ahead, open up this box, and let's get started. Inside the box, we have an SD card, additional audio cables, heat shrink because I know that there are gonna be some components that I won't use, additional audio cables, and electrical tape. In the unit itself, they've provided us with instructions, the head unit, GPS cable, wiring harness, USB cables, the audio cables, and additional video wires as well. They do include it in case you wanted to add a TV or a backup camera, but I have the factory backup camera, so I won't need this. So anytime that we're working in the car with electronics, we wanna make sure to disconnect the battery. And you do that with just a 10 millimeter wrench, and it's nice to have some cardboard lying around to make sure that the terminal does not reconnect to the battery. Also, make sure that you put something on your trunk latch so it doesn't close. Now with the battery disconnected, the first thing that we'll do is remove the vent trim right here. So just take your trim tool, and pop it off. You will see that we have two clips right here. All that we need to do is get underneath, push the locking mechanism in, and both locking mechanisms are underneath. You have to push them in and then guide out the connector. Set aside the vent somewhere safe. Then we can begin to remove four of the torque screws here and they're just held in by a T20. Remove this trim piece by poking it out on the bottom. And rather than just disconnecting it, just turn it sideways and let it hang in the glove box. Take out the two remaining torque screws that we have here and pull out the head unit. Because we've given this cable some slack, we can pull out this head unit, turn it around, and we'll see that we have a locking mechanism right here. Push it in and pull down. Now that we have the head unit out, we have to remove the original wiring harness. And to do that, all that we do is lift up on this lever here, and it will slide on out. You may have an optic fiber cable here that slots into one of these two slots. Just take it out and put it into the new wiring harness of your new system. If not, if you're like me and you don't have anything here, just go ahead and proceed forward. You don't need, you don't need to reroute any of these cables. So for all of these cords, unless you plan to use them, you should just wrap them up with an electrical tape or use heat shrink. Cover them up and then cut it to length. And for this step, any heat gun or open flame will work as long as it shrinks the wrap. Now that we're all done, Let's go back in the car and connect the new wiring harness. It only goes in one way. Make sure to carefully place it in before locking it down. Properly align the new and original wiring harness. Push it in and lock it into place. Feed the new wiring harness up through the center console until it gets to the top. Take your GPS cable and do the exact same thing. This GPS cable will just route through the head unit because it'll connect to the screen directly. This GPS antenna 
it's magnetic on this side. So we can see that we have our GPS antenna magnetically attached to that metal railing. Now the last thing that we have to put through is going to be our USB cords. So just funnel it through like we did the GPS cable. We're gonna make sure to connect the new wiring harness to this top portion up here. The USB cables go to this cable over here in the left corner. This right corner one is meant for if you're gonna do video as well as the microphone, but since I'm not doing that, I'm not gonna connect it. The GPS will go onto this adapter and our original wiring harness will go onto this side. And the nice thing here is that everything fits in to a unique slot. So it's virtually impossible to mess up where things go here. Let's test it out and see if it works. And it works. Let's see if we have audio. And I can say that the audio is working as well, but I don't want to play any music just so that I don't get a copyright strike. But the music is coming in nice and clear, no problem. The Android side works as well. Navigation off the SD card seems to be pulling just fine too. Now that we have everything in working order, let's insert our micro SD card. And the way that we do that is by using a small screwdriver to pry in the door here. And you will see two slots here, but just know that one is covered. So the SD card will go into the open slot. And from this angle, the micro SD card will insert upside down with the gold face plated up and push it in like that. Use the cover to close the door. Now slide in the head unit. Because of the extra cabling that we have here, be very gentle and if you have to, just guide the wires as you're pushing them back. Because there are a lot more things there now, it's gonna be very, very tight. So if you have to, just guide everything to where you want it so that the head unit can slide easily back into place. For now, I won't be using these USBs, but later on I can install the CarPlay or Android Auto. Reinstall the control panel. Our vent. It's easier to put in the more square connection first. The locking mechanism goes on the bottom. Push it in. The one on the top, very easy. And with that, we're all done. Let's fire it up and double check everything. The system seems to be working fine. The backup camera, you just have to select it and it comes on perfectly fine. The screen resolution looks good. Uh, it's a better field of view. You have the regular radio that works well. Your audio components you can play around with. It connects to the Bluetooth on your phone just the same. Initial thoughts are it's a great way to upgrade your radio system and save a little bit of money versus getting it straight from the factory. As you can see behind me, I have a huge mess to clean up, but the point of this install was just to show you that there are easier and more cost-effective ways to upgrade from the basic packages of the car that you have. Don't be pressured into getting the upgraded packages when it comes with, yes, the navigation, yes, the bigger screen, but then the six other features that you'll never ever use or not even interested in getting, and it costs thousands of dollars because it comes in a package form. This, we're getting exactly what we want. We get the bigger screen, we get the GPS, all the while keeping costs low and all of the benefits of doing it ourselves it's actually very rewarding for me personally and if you're looking for any of the products that I had in this video I'll leave the links down below but if you don't feel comfortable doing this install just go ahead let us know where you're from in the comment section down below and we as a community will help you find somebody that can do the install for you while keeping costs low if you enjoyed this video give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video